Hey guys, it is Yozora. And today we'll be talking about the new German super cruiser, the Klausfitz. So, to directly get it out of the way, the ship will be available at first only in auction. So just like the Edgar and the Patry, it looks like it's not a way super ships will be available at first. Uh, the auction will start on the 19th, on the, sorry, the 29th of September and will last until the 3rd of October at noon. With a total of 500 ships available, but throughout the entire uh, player base, so EU, CIS, NA, and Asia. And the starting bid will be at 100 million credits. It is expensive, of course, and yeah, you might be wondering, is the ship anything worth it? So, essentially, Klauswitz, she really is exactly how, it, how she looks. It is Hindenburg, but bigger. Is it as great as Annapolis and Conde? Well, no. I'll explain a bit, a bit more later. So, compared to Hindenburg, the main difference would be the main armor, the main deck, which is 50 mirror to take instead of 30. And other than that, she gets a nice DPM boost for the HE with around 10%, plus has also a higher fire chances. But for the AP, it isn't... Well, actually, she's losing DPM, but something like 7k in total, it's really not that big of a difference. But at least in return, she's getting better AP penetration, so now she is... It's pretty much demo in AP penetration, but like there is a 10 millimeter more, so you really are going to be nitpicky if you will spot the difference. So yeah, at least firepower wise, well actually also, I forgot to mention that, the, eight, the alpha damage, of course, also goes up because she's uh, using 210mm guns instead of 203. So if you are facing a broadside target that isn't like a Kremlin which has truckloads of armor, and it's nicely broadside, don't worry, you can switch to AP and you will get some pretty solid chunks of damage. Other than that, for the HE, well, let's put, it, let's put it this way, the close vids, it is incredibly good at farming damage. Just like the Indian Bow, basically, but a lot better. You have the better fire chances. You, because of the armor, you also can just go screw it and go with um, a Lighthouse build. Personally here, I went with a bit of a in-between. So it's... Not a full lighthouse build, it's not a full standard cruiser build, I just picked um, AVHE, which is when my consument is down to 14.7, instead of, uh, I think it's around 12.8? Don't quote me on, on that because I have, didn't play full consument close rates in a very long time. But yeah, essentially it should be farming damage like no tomorrow. But there is one small problem. Compared to Hindenburg, she gets a much worse firing angles. At the front, it's not that bad. It's only it's 37 mm, uh, 37 degrees instead of 35. But at the back, when kiting, that's where the big issue appears because it's 39 degrees. So. If you are dealing with a battleship, it's still somewhat fine, you have the time to angle between salvos and you will always have in any case the 50 minutes to take to uh, bounce shells, even from stuff like Yamato, Hawaii and that sort of things. But yeah, if it's a cruiser using a cruiser with strong AP, especially, you know, Annapolis with the improved pen angles, you will have a very bad day. 
So yeah, stronger firepower, better farming damage, but at what cost? Other than that, for close range combat, because, you know, you, especially now with better armor, you can allow yourself to play more aggressively. Well, she has a pretty nasty torpedo armament. She gets 10 torpedoes per side compared to 4 torpedoes on Hindenburg. So, yeah, if you have the occasion to rush the target, it's still very healthy. Don't worry, the torpedoes will do their job. Although, if it's stuff like Kremlin with the huge HP pool and also str the pretty strong um, torpedo damage reduction, you might not have enough if it's full HP, but generally speaking, in random, you rarely have a ship at full HP at a point in the game when you can uh, rush it. So it should be fine. Uh, there is one thing I actually need to clear up. Because I know some people might still have it in mind and will think, hey, I'll just go with that kind of build. The secondaries have normal dispersion. It was announced at the very beginning that the ship would have increased dispersion, uh, well, reduced dispersion on our secondaries in the same way as Schlieffen. Well, she does not. I have absolutely no idea of when it was changed because I don't, I, there wasn't any dev blog mentioning it, so it might have been just something that was changed in uh, early super test, no idea. But yeah, in any case, please don't run secondary build. Sure, she has very strong, the secondaries themselves are very strong, like it's the 128, German 128, so you have to improve the HE penetration and etc, etc. But you still have the normal dispersion, so you won't eat anything. So here's an example actually on how to not go with a top your run on a, on a uh, enemy battleship. Because you will see I am dropping them way too soon. I'm thinking that lion won't won't have the time to fully turn. I will have the top yours will at least reach him, one or two of them. Well no, first I completely forgot that bridge battleships are pretty tight turning radius. And in any case I just dropped them way too soon. Fortunately, I'm at least a bit better at, uh, at drive-by, so yeah. D don't worry, you didn't see anything, it didn't happen, it's fine. There you go. Yeah, that's at least one thing where the closet is much better than the Hindenburg. Normally, at, even at very close range, the Hindenburg will generally struggle to get citadels on battleships. But the close width at least at something like three, four kilometers and such, you will be able to get the citadels. Hindenburg, you could just forget it. You could be basically point blank range, except on stuff with very squishy main belt, of course. But for example, on the Yamato, even at point blank range, there are the guns scratching the main belt you would never get citadels. So that's at least one thing close Vita has in case, just like here, the top of your run goes bad. And you have the AP to rely, rely on if it's a battleship with Xbox Citadel. But yeah, now, let's go back to the initial problem because now that there is a big downtime, all the enemies are, stuck, are stacked on A. And just like the Indenburg, the thing is pretty damn sluggish so yeah, if your flank dies too fast you will have the time to get yourself a nice little coffee before you can actually get to shoot to again to shoot something again so yeah the problem with Annapolis and Condé well when you look at things this, this way both the Annapolis and Condé are their completely stupid alternative firing mode because yeah in case you didn't notice close with has nothing she's like the Patri, a very, a very vanilla sort of ship, if I can say it like that. But yeah, compared to that, you have the Conde with her stupidly strong super broadside uh, alternative firing mode with the reduced dispersion. 
so combined with the strong French AP, well, you Conde can just nuke any crew that will give her broadside. On the other side, you have Annapolis, which has literally already well demo in guns, which are pretty well known for printing a lot of damage when the situation comes in play. Well, on top of that, she has an additional turret while keeping the same reload. And she also gets way better still protection. Like, it's not even funny or, or better or tankier Annapolis is compared to, to the Moina. So, yeah, both Conde and Annapolis get already insane damage boost compared to the previous ships. Annapolis gets much better protection. And they both get the um, alternative fire mode. Meanwhile, you have close bits with just, yeah, around 10% better damage output. Well, real time at least. No. What did you say? I'm, re I'm retarded. 10% DPM, sorry. The DAV is slightly better. You have, sure, you have the 50 meter deck, but at the same time, the firing angles are all just really damn bad so yeah it is of course an improvement over Indenborg the problem is that well she doesn't stack very well against both Conde and Annapolis unless the guys are completely stupid and you they give you full broadside and you get a massive chunk of damage on them in general we, you will be fighting a downhill battle at best, with an Annapolis, you can use the range, and even then, it's still pretty sluggish, as I said before, so you won't be able to dodge that well. With Conde, you just, you just forget it. Like, seriously, you forget it. So, yeah, that's my big problem with the close bits. Sure, she becomes a near better damage farmer than Conde and Annapolis, and sorry, than Hindenburg. But, yeah, she will never have anywhere near the game impact of either of the... of Annapolis and Conde. Like, it's not even funny in terms of comparison. Conde, on top of her alternative firing watch, has a real booster to be sure that whoever will be giving her broadside will just die. Annapolis has the radar, she has the insane DPM, and... Uh, as again, as I said, alternative firing mode, be sure that whoever appears in front of her will just die. But clo close with, no, she's just stuck with the good old basic damage farming. Now, let's just make it clear. She's absolutely not a bad ship. But again, I'm just scratching my head trying to figure out how these two are considered fine, but at the same time, they are a whole league above closets, which is also apparently balance wise fine. I honestly don't understand. Now, would I get. I was about to say 100 million credits, but. It's it would be a whole lot more if you want to get the ship. Would I spend such a high amount of credits for her? Uh, if you are an absolute fan of Hindenburg, I guess you can. Like, as I said, if you like the damage farming playstyle of German cruisers, sure, go ahead. But otherwise, yeah, there are many better ways to spend credit on, uh, in this game. So yeah, at this point of the game, in any case, well, it's a wrap. I'm just going to spend way too much time trying to kill that small ends because that's a bit of a problem with the German, German shells, you know, they are very light. So while the initial velocity of the shells are, is great, past the 
14 kilometers and such. And they are starting to slow down quite a bit. So at times it... I can't that's, on that one end, well partially it's because I'm a bit of an idiot and I can't aim for crap. But yeah, at times the slow shell, the, the fact that shells are slowing down quite a lot at range will be a bit uncomfortable. But then again, if you play the Hindenburg, you are more than used to it. For some reason, that Conde is still alive, even though he's just stuck in the border for what a minute or so, or so right by now. But yeah, as you might have, as you might guess, he won't last too long in there. I was hoping to get a bit more damage on him before the game ends, but no, we'll just die before. Actually, no, never mind. It's not him, him dying, it's the game ending, because we are... On two caps ticking, we are 900 and 500 points, so... Yeah, at this point, I want you to have the time to get in range. In any case, that was my opinion on Clausewitz. I hope you found it useful, and... If you have need any sort of... De additional detail, just take, check my uh, article on the, webs on the Daily Bounce. Anyway, that's all for me.